front of me, I've got a big butternut squash. I took my Prismacolor color erase non-photo blue pencil. I actually just tried to trace it. So there's a blue uh, line around. Um, and it might be hard to see at this point, but probably as I paint, you'll be able to see it better. I'm hoping. Okay, so I'm activating my six tubes of colors, which are made up of a warm primary set and a cool primary set. And I'm going to go ahead and take um, a mixing brush and I'm gonna take uh, some warm yellow, which looks a little more golden and a touch of my warm red. And it gives me a, a pretty orange, hopefully you can see. Now, this squash has some orange in it. It's not quite yellow orange, because you can see if I add more yellow to it, it you know, just makes it more yellow orange, which is okay. Um, so I've got kind of two colors there, but we also mix up, um, there's a lot of like violet, blue, purple um, in this mix. So I'm just mixing up with my cool red and my warm blue, red, violet. And I'm going to tag on a little bit more ultramarine so I have a little bit more blue purple on the right with more red violet. And that's kind of how I'm going to start with it. So I'm going to take um, a big watercolor brush and I'm going to begin with a layer of water. So it will help me get less hard edges by having water. Um, if I'm doing a wet on wet painting, then I have to keep the paper pretty wet so I don't get harsh edges. So I actually like a combo, um, but on video, it's really hard to um, stop and let it dry unless I start the pause the camera and, and, and start it all over. But I don't know if I could do that live. Okay, so it's pretty wet. And then I'm going to add this light orange um, and put a light layer or, you know, wash glaze on here. And you can see it just kind of floating around the paper because there's a lot of water. So the problem is when we start painting is a lot of times we let the paper dry and that gives us problems because when we add water and paint, it blooms because the paint is drawn to wherever the edge is. So um, I'm seeing, I know it's hard to see it's the way the camera is, but I see some uh, white in here, so I'm just going to lift that off with a clean brush. And obviously, I saved this spot, but I'm going to add a little bit more color in here. So, how do we create form? Well, it's by the values. So I'm trying to get darks and lights. And this corner is actually painted in, um, let's see if my, there we go. So you can kind of see the lights and darks. And then there seems to be an area kind of up here that's reflecting too. And this area is 
got a little bit of color, so I'm just going to lift off some of it. I could also take my paper towel and I could blot it a little bit. Um, but when I do that, it becomes too light. So I don't really like that. Um, artist's prerogative to change, change the mind. This seems like it gives it a little bit more depth. So if I add a little bit more of the orange mix, they're both the same mix, but one side had a little bit more orange. I will help to kind of create a little bit of dimension. So let's let's close that in. And my view is slightly different. So I'm kind of trying to look at the camera. So if I was going to glaze, meaning layering the colors on top, I would let this completely dry and then add my next layer. So what I see, and on the camera, it, it looks much uh, taupey, brown, more beigey, where um, in person, the squash has a little bit more peachy color to it, a little more peach, peach flesh. So um, I'm going to leave it this more golden color. And then I'm going to start dropping in some purples. Take some of that water out. This is pretty wet. And let's, let's start up on top. So I might be able to um, help you see that it becomes kind of like a dirtier color here. Sure, hoping. Um, both screens are going to work today. So I'm kind of mixing it, and I can see in here there's, you know, a lot of what I call purple or violet cast to it. And then make sure you soften any hard edges. So um, just water. Yeah, let's take a smaller brush and put a little bit of water up here at the stem. Let that kind of dry. And then I still want to kind of soften. But this is a good time to kind of see how my edges are doing. And there seems to be kind of streaks of you know, violet and this purple in this area. And that kind of starts giving it dimension. It's just really wet. I really love glazing because I can re-wet it and maintain the colors underneath and have kind of glow going through that. So I'm going back and forth from the video camera to the paper to kind of see what 
what needs um, color or not. So it's kind of a spig. It's not getting light because my light source is top left. So call that in shadow. Oh, some people call it lack of light. And you can see that it's starting to get some shape. So I'm going back to more of, uh, I think, the red violet. Just with water. Keep these this edge soft. So what happens is if the paper's starting to dry, it's going to pool towards wherever there's water, and that's why we get it. So it really needs to sit a little, or I would have to walk away and um, blow dry. But notice it's it's kind of puddling at the bottom. So I'm just gonna kind of lift it. Um, if not, sometimes I take a brush and kind of soften the edge a little bit. So I need to get darker and I have to decide. Um, let's lift this edge up too before it dries. And I can clean it up with a couple tools afterwards. Um, with these fine little brushes, and sometimes I go in the edges and just kind of soften them. Um, it helps me clean up the edges too. I like that. And take a small little brush and um, there's a lot of like little dark spots. Um, I need to get darker in here because there's definitely some shading. Go back to my bigger brush brushes. Yeah, dry. I might add some blue to it to um, deepen it. I could add some paints gray. I could add some brown to it. Um, let's lift up here just a little bit. So I'm going to kind of let that sit. But what I would like to do is kind of build, build colors, um, some nice. And if you go in too soon, which I may be, um, if you go in too soon with the detail, you're going to lose them anyways, but let's see. Let's get the kind of softened a little bit. I'm going to take some warm blue, which is my ultramarine blue, and make a little bit darker shade. Most like the red violet works, but it's a little bit warmer. Um, let's see. Some mixed up burnt sienna. So I'm adding my mix of burnt sienna, which is an orange with um, some blue in it usually. And I'm going to 
drop in it's kind of space underneath. It actually curves down, so have to be careful of that. Let's see if we can get a little bit deeper in this range. I can see the shadow. Now, always to uh, soften and blend. So it seems like it kind of curves around. So it's really fussing, you know, fussing till you get it the way you might get. Let's not lose those highlights. Now the beauty of uh, glazing is you can put many, many layers on it, but you have to let it dry a little bit. So I just want to get, let me see, a little blue purple on here. Yeah. yeah. So I want to drop in, let's see. Some more, there's like little spots kind of all around. And I just take my finger while it's wet. Here it's a little drier and kind of punch that down a little bit. Um, that gives it that nice shadow. I'll go in there with a brush. This still has to get darker. But I think I'm almost better off waiting until it dries a little bit. You can start to see it, I think. This brush is too small. So sometimes it's better. You could do a lot out with them. Um, you know, a bigger brush than you think. Don't be afraid of it. If there's too much water, just like blot the brush. Um, you know, if you don't need water in the painting. And I'm just lightly, lightly sweeping this around. So it's starting to get the glow, but it, it's going to need um, some more layers. But I'm hoping that you can see how I get started and how few colors I need to get this array of changes. So after I kind of base everything in, if I need to, if you know what a butternut squash looks like, it's really like kind of orangey inside. The outside is kind of peachy orange here. It looks more brown on video. Um, I could lightly glaze this with an orange and pull it all together. But what I first want to do is build up my layers and my volume. And then one of the things I love is uh, what we call Mr. Clean Sponge. And uh, I cut it in half and then I cut it in pieces and you wet a tip of it. So if this isn't bleeding, but I can clean up edges with this very carefully. If you rub too hard, um, you know, you damage your paper too, but it's a nice way to uh, clean up any little loose spots. So I'm looking at this and I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to stop here. So I may continue on another video. Um, and if I do finish, I'll post it. But um, let me know if this is helping you 
understanding the beginning processes of uh, painting something with just six tubes. We actually only used four colors, five with um, the mixtures, but um, six colors tops, right? And we can get so many different changes. So uh, follow me on YouTube, uh, subscribe, or follow me on Facebook, and you'll get alerts when I post. I apologize with the technology. Have a great weekend.